So in this video, I will illustrate um, PBGP connection over IPsec and you're going to create an IPsec over public IPs and I am going to cover uh, public in this video and then later on with NATs with uh, one single public. In this, this scenario, the assumption is that you got two public IPs and I'll show you uh, how you can create an IPsec tunnel with VOS. So this is going to be VOS, IPsec, and then EBGP. This will help you create network connections to cloud. And VOS is available AWS as well as Azure, and I'm sure it's also available in GCP. I've not looked at it. But if you got this thing working with VOS, EBGP IPsec, um, with public IP, with NATs, so the others, other scenario would be behind NATs with obviously one IP. And so I'll cover that in the second video, but in today's video, I'm just covering creating IPsec with two public IPs at least. And then once that IPsec tunnel comes up, uh, we will have EBGP uh, configured over IPsec and then exchange our routes. So the diagram is going to look like something like this. And let's select our pen. And the diagram is going to be looking like something like this. You have a BIOS 1. That could be in one cloud, on-prem, whatever. And it's connected to your local area network. And uh, this BIOS 1 is connected to the internet. And in my case, my internet is VOS2. Let's say this is the internet. And then your other side could be a cloud or another on-prem, what have you. Doesn't really matter. If you can get this scenario going, you can it's not relevant how what the what these sites could be are. This could be on-prem or it could be cloud. And this site could be on-prem or a cloud, not a cloud. But if you can use VIOS to get IPsec going, what that will let you do is it will let you have a secure connection extend your private l3 network over this ipsec tunnel so here's your ipsec tunnel uh, a note why you need to emphasize on ipsec is because aws supports GRE and for routing to work you need some kind of a tunneling uh, mechanism so GRE is one of those but Azure does not Azure does not support GRE and it only supports IPsec so IPsec is common between both of them and I am going to show uh, IPsec with IKV2. All right, so this is the scenario here. Um, I've got this uh, set up with obviously simple network connections. Dot two here on E0. E0.1 and this one is a 23.0.0.0 and 
this one is E1, E1. This is dot two and dot three. This is my underlay, obviously. This is the internet connection. So obviously the assumption is you are able to reach uh, from this VOS interface with the public IP, right? To this VOS interface with the public IP. Okay, so once you have that, now you need one more public IP to create your IPsec. And in my case, I'm using loopback on both sides. So the loopback here, I have, let's kind of get rid of some of the stuff here. Okay. On loopback, on V1, I'm using this address. And on this side, V3, I'm using loopback with this address. So I'm going to show you the config and pay attention to what uh, how the IPsec configuration looks like. Uh, this is a uh, non-direct connection. Uh, when you do an IPsec with VOS with a direct connection, what I mean by direct connection is this. You got VOS 1 and you got a direct dedicated circuit to your uh, other site like this. So there's this circuit is a direct circuit uh, and there's no internet in the middle even though it they, they could be a public or it doesn't really matter when you have a dedicated circuit like this. So if you have a direct type dedicated circuit, uh, you your IPsec configuration is going to slightly differ. Direct circuit. Okay. So I'm discussing non-direct circuits, like uh, you're going through an internet uh, connection. And your primary could be a direct and your secondary could be an internet non-direct, but the IPsec would look, the configuration would be slightly different. And I'll share that in the next video, but this one is non-direct connections. Non-direct. So having said that, let's go dive in to, I've already got the setup going, right? And so what I am going to show you, I'm going to show you first the connectivity. So you got your, so in this setup, your assumptions are that you have two reachable, at least two reachable IP public, public IP addresses. One is this guy on this side, and the other one is this guy on this side. And on this side, you have this guy as a public IP and this guy as a public IP, reachable through internet, public IP, equals to internet. If internet would, your, your service provider would be able to route these addresses, right? So that's what it means. Uh, now, having said that, we'll test the connectivity now with VOS 1 and VOS 2 just to show you that here is VOS 1. And here's my VOS 3. And your VOS 2 needs to be obviously configured such that you can reach 1111 So I'll quickly show you VOS 2 configuration, very straightforward, just two static routes. Show up your route, that's my VOS 2. I've got static routes 2, 1111, 
and 3333. All right, and then static routes to uh, 10010, which are uh, not required in this case. You can ignore that, it's private. So my reachability of public addresses means I can run ping from my VOS1 to VOS3 without sourcing it. And I can uh, run a ping from VOS3 to VOS1. And my internet is going to route this. So that's good. All right. Both are pinging. It's a little slow, but it is. Okay. So now that my public IPs are reachable, 1111 and 3333, my IPsec tunnel is going to look like this. So V1 to V3. This is the configuration of IPsec. It's overwhelming to look at, but you can just copy and paste this through VOS website. That's what I did. Uh, the tricky part is direct and non-direct. It's confusing how you do this for direct and non-direct this is how VOS1 is going to be pointing towards the peer and its local authentication ID is going to be its local address. In non-direct, it's different. In direct, it's different. So this is how your IPsec is going to look like. Okay, and I've created dummy addresses and a VTI addresses. You, you, you don't need a dummy, but in, in my case, I'm routing it. So this route is going over the IPsec tunnel. So whenever I ping, it's gonna route over IPsec. So again, take a snapshot of this. It's uh, overwhelming, but it's divided. If you can divide this into Ike and ESP groups, it basically has something like this. This is the site-to-site -site IPsec. This is the Ike group. Uh, keep all of this same, or if you want to change it, you can, but uh, your objective here is to test it out. So these are Ike v2 uh, configuration, uh, and this works. I put this config in VOS 1.2 and later, and it works like a champ. Uh, again, this dummy VTI interface is routed over IPsec, uh, just to make sure that I don't have I did show you with a route, so I'll show you that I have deleted the ISP route here. I've deleted the 10 10.01 and 10.02, so these are routed over the tunnel. So if I have to draw this, my drawing is going to look like 10.01.0.2. Zero slash twenty four, and this dummy interface is dummy zero is dot one, and this site is my dummy interface is dummy zero is ten zero two zero slash twenty four, and it's dot one. So I should be able to reach my private to private address space connectivity from here over the tunnel, IPsec tunnel, because these addresses are not routable over the internet, over IPsec. So these are not public addresses, private addresses. Okay, so <clears throat> here's my V1 again, V3, run ping from 10.0.0.2 to 10 0 2, 2, 2 from the source address. So it's important that you specify the source address because that's how the routing is working, right? And you should be able to ping, all right? now. That is your IPsec. Uh, if, let me show you both sites. 
so that you have a snapshot to compare. So that's your V1 on, in this setup. V1 has this, right? And V3 is this. So I'm gonna you can take a snapshot of this too. Let me make it as even as possible. CSP, this is Ike, and then so if I switch between two, you can see right here what's changing. All right. So this is one, this is three. If you put this information in your VOS with this setup, your IPsec comes up and your routing on this address. So you got to spec specify a static. Now I'll show you the BGP part as well. But this is just for the static uh, illustration that if you want something static, you have to put in static routes for every interface that you need to do as a next hop VTI virtual tunnel interface. That's your IPsec on both sides with static routing. Now let's take a look at BGP. <clears throat> so if I do show run show IP BGP summary, you'll see that I have BGP up, right, on both sides. Run show IP BGP summary. I have BGP up. So if I do show uh, run show IP route, you'll see a BGP route coming in right here, uh, triple one one one. So this is my BGP route coming from BIOS one and BIOS one has this interface run show interface. And triple one is a dummy one interface on BIOS one. So I'm advertising this show protocol BGP like this. If you look at here, my mouse disappears in the VOS window, but if you look here, right here, in this portion, left side, I'm advertising network triple one 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 slash 32, and the VOS 3 learns it over IPsec. So I'm establishing BGP over IPsec. How is my BGP looking on both sides? Show protocol BGP, I'm establishing BGP neighbor relationship on private addresses. And that private address is getting routed over IPsec to a static route. So that is important to, to make sure that you're uh, routing BGP over IPsec. And this is how you're, and then you use these two commands, update source uh, on the left side, update source 10.0.1.1, and update source 10.0.2.2. Two, two on both sides and then once you do that your BGP comes up you advertise it using the network command right here on the left side and I'm going to advertise one more command so if I don't have run a show IP route BGP I don't have anything here so I'm going to advertise set protocol BGP let's see make sure I have an interface uh, run show interface so I'm going to advertise 3333, 3, 3, this one right here, dummy one. It's not getting learned on VOS one. So I'm going to advertise that set protocol BGP three network and address family. How do you do this address family BGP three address family IP V four unicast network. 33, 3, slash 32, commit. BGP is a slow protocol, but here it is. It's pretty quick here. I just learned 33, 333, 3, and it's going in, like I said, the BGP peers are over IP set. So you run ping 33, 33, your source interface needs to be something that is already learned or even 10.0.1.1. So there goes your connectivity. Uh, again, I'll show you the BGP configuration, show protocol, BGP. It's pretty straightforward, nothing there, just the 
tricky part is that you got to establish it with the private addresses on both sides. Take a snapshot of that, show protocol BGP. Now, if you've got this going, then you have pretty much connectivity over IPsec over internet between any two or more sites. Now, this is again, between two public IP addresses, two public, why I say that? Because your outgoing interface and your IPsec tunnel needs to be able to reach these. And you can create uh, IPsec over, if you do IPsec directly on the outgoing interface, the problem is that it's gonna encrypt traffic going out and it's not gonna work. So you need a second public IP address that is not the outgoing interface. So that's the tricky part with IPsec. You need two interfaces. Um, so that's 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 up for this video. Uh, and this is again not using NAT. In the next one, I'm going to do EBGP with IPsec behind a NAT where you just have one IP. So hope this helps. If you have any questions or any, you need anything, let me know. I can uh, send you the configs. But I did share the configs with you. All right, hope this helps.